five years ago, I really felt like I was at the peak of my life. I was the first doctor in the entire family, then became a consultant emergency physician, presenting in international conferences, published medical journals, married to a beautiful wife, been blessed with three beautiful daughters. Little do we know what's coming next. It starts with my father-in-law, a very humble, quiet guy that had a very terrible childhood. He was physically abused by his step family. He hardly laughed. As far as know, I know him, until we hand him our child. He decided to retire to play with his grandkids. Four months after retirement, he actually involved in a motor vehicle accident. When we take x-ray, we realize that the fracture was not caused by the motor vehicle accident. It was actually caused by a cancer that had been eating up the bone. Then here come my father, one month after that, visiting my father-in-law. He came to my office and asked me what kind of test that you actually run on my father-in-law to determine what type of cancer that he has. Then he offered me to take his blood and to run the same test. So as any son will do, I did it. And one month after that, within one week, one week after that, one of the results for his prostate marker was very high. And we did a series of blood tests and imaging, and turned out he actually has prostate cancer that has spread to his lymph node. Within this time, my wife started to complain of rashes on her hands and feet that slowly progresses into her trunk and the rash became really dry and scaly. Two dermatologists was visited. It was treated by eczema and allergic reaction. It became worse after six months when she started to have a fever. I remember consulting my surgical colleague and he advised for us to proceed with CT neck until the pelvic. I was in the CT room observing the real-time result when my wife was scanned. I can see a cancer surrounding her heart and liver at that very moment. And this all happened within 10 months. So here I was, the first doctor in the family, and the first doctor to be faced with three different cancers within 10 months. The journey we went through was really tough. Being a physician does not even prepare me to take care of my wife because medical field and caregivers are two different things. I remember refusing to sleep beside my wife for about two to three weeks simply because I was afraid that one day I might be sleeping next to nobody. My father in lost cancer caused his immune system to lower. He was admitted twice with severe pneumonia. And the second admission, the infection spread and he finally passed away. My father opted for a minor surgery, hormonal treatments, and he's actually now very active doing his charity work. My wife has to go through 12 cycles of chemotherapy. We fought through, and I was very quiet when I managed them. And finally, I posted these photos on my Facebook, commemorating two years of remission. And through my surprise, I got lots of responses. Question after question was thrown. I mean, how did this happen? How do you find out about it? As a doctor, what have you done? How do you handle all the non-medical issues? So when I start to list down questions, I realized that one page of questions became 14 pages of questions alone. I remember being stopped by a strangers at the airport. 
people really wanted to know my side of the story. So it became a non-fiction memoir. So here I would like to share with you how do I manage the obstacles. Big dreams comes big obstacles. If you want to achieve a big dream, you have to face a big obstacles. My advice is, when you're facing with obstacles, we are human, we have emotions. Some of us will take the obstacle as challenge and we're very excited about it. And quite often we'll be sad, disappointed, angry, confused. My first advice always been, try to remove the emotion a little bit from the obstacles. You can do that by daily meditation, or some call it praying. It, it's not for you to become numb, it's just for you to examine the obstacle rationally. We actually did that, especially during my wife's uh, chemotherapy sessions. And we realized that some of the obstacles we can just ignore. For example, we live in a double-story house, we lock one of the rooms simply because I don't have to be bothered to clean it. I gave a key to one of my car to my brothers so that he can drive it and take care of the maintenance. I don't even want to know about it. Then there came an obstacle where you can actually outsource it. This is what we did. I, write, I wrote a few post-data check, standing instruction on online banking, so that I don't have to be bothered about bills for the next six months. I call out my car agent, give him my credit card number, and I told him, this is what happened, all my car installment, you take care of it, car servicing, insurance, road tech, I don't even want to know about it, I just want to drive the car. I told my distant cousin, who's actually running a part-time catering business, whenever you cook for someone, same meal, you cook extra and bring it to us. By outsourcing, now you have a real obstacle that you have to face. Either you like it or not, to win your dream with me at that time is to make sure my wife went through all the 12 cycle and be declared cured. That was my dream. I have to handle it. Here's my tips. You break down that obstacle into manageable size. For example, with regard to chemotherapy, we divide it into pre-chemotherapy day, chemotherapy day, and post-chemotherapy day. Then it looks more organized. And every single step, we let it out. Pre-chemotherapy day, meals, kids, time, bedroom. The bedroom has to be clean and scrubbed before chemotherapy day. So when you list it down, it's not too bad. So when you're going to be hit with a huge obstacle, break it down into few manageable sizes, manageable bite size, and start taking a small bite at a time. Rest, rearrange, continue biting. Before you know it, you have overcome it. But if you look at the obstacle in a huge matter, you will never be able to do it. You move mountains by moving a small pebble at a time. Then I've been asked a question, so now, how do I help people? That's the main reason that I, I wrote the nonfiction, how to help people. People are focusing too much on solving their friends' problems, solving their relative problems. That's actually is not the best thing to do. Unless you're really, really good at it, then go ahead and solve the problem. Otherwise, what I will suggest is take a load of them by outsourcing some of their problems. I'll give you an example. When we heard that our neighbor's daughter was diagnosed with cancer, me as a physician, I didn't simply tell me, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. No. I actually told my wife, when you send our daughter to school, their eldest daughter or do went to the same school, just pick them up and send it together. When you have a friend that's about to finish a thesis, 
the due date is about to come up. You outsource for them. Prepack the meal for them. Do their laundry. Borrow them your laptop. And they're going to have a huge weight off their shoulder to focus on what really, really matters. That's what you're supposed to do. When your car, when your friend's car broke down, you're not a mechanic. But when you order a pizza for your own home, order extra for them. When you drive to buy a groceries, buy something for them. When you're driving your kids to see a movie, offer to bring their kids as well. I can tell you, these are the things that really, really matters. Why not creating a virtual community? When my wife had to go through chemotherapy, we need to make sure that she's eating a freshly cooked daily meals, not processed meal. It has to be daily freshly cooked. And I'm having a tough time getting it because I'm still doing my calls, I'm still working, and I have to take care of three different cancers within 10 months. It would be nice if there is a virtual community. All I need is a three people of them come up with a social media group Offer to cook one meal per month. And before you know it, I'm going to get whole month of free daily freshly cooked meal. It's not difficult to think about it. All you need is a 30 people that are willing to do it. You imagine you have a hundred members in a group that are willing to cook once a month. The other 30 people willing to drive my kids to the park willing to come to our home to do some chores. You know how much kind of a problem that being lifted? We are too focusing on solving our, our friends' problem, our family members' problem. We forgot the fact that we can actually help them by unload some of the problem. I'm still being asked, what do I do if I have no idea how to outsource? What do I do if I'm too busy, I cannot help my friends. Is there any one thing that I can do to help them? I can tell you there is. You look at them and you tell them this. I cannot imagine what you are going through right now. Honestly, I have no idea how to help you. If you need any help at any particular moment, no matter how small it is, give me a call. That's all you need to do. You want to believe me or not, out of three cancers, we got lots of visitors. Only two of them offered such. Is it important? Yes. Because I know at any time, I got this one or two friends that I can call. Let me give you an example. My wife finished chemotherapy and she's vomiting in our room and my youngest daughter is still in diapers. And I realized that the diapers finish. So what do I do? Do I be a good husband or I be a good father? I can only be one. And honestly, I don't want to leave my wife. And I also don't want to have problems of not having diapers on my kids middle of the night. So this is the time I call that friend. I say, I need your help. She automatically say, okay, now you tell me what do you want. Because she know I'm not going to ask for millions. I'm going to ask for that particular help. I said, I just need a few diapers to make her survive that night. She went out, bought diapers. Obviously, she bought some other things. Came to our house, play around with my kids, and then go back. If you want to label that as a friend, then I label that as a true friend. I don't need people to come and lecture me on what I'm supposed to do, why my, my wife had cancer. We already know that. We need that help. So one day, when your friends, your relative, your spouse has some problem that you have no idea how to solve it, you tell them, I cannot imagine what you're going through now. Honestly, I have no idea how to do it. If you need any help at any particular moment, no matter how small it is, give me a call. 
And that's all you need to do. With that, I thank you.